The LG G6 is a solid device and we'd even dare say it's the flagship underdog of 2017. But is it worth your money? We're going to answer that question in this review video. So Rowan, when you got this device and started using it, what was the one thing that really stood out? I think you'd agree, it's those two cameras on the back. So the LG G6 has a dual lens system like many other phones on the market, but it implements it differently. One of those lenses is a wide angle lens, which means it has a wider field of view and you can capture much more information with it. Yeah. You can get creative, you can take landscape shots. It's extremely practical because just imagine you're out on vacation, you want to get that shot of that view or that monument or whatever. It's easy, you don't have to step back, you got that shot. Or you're with a big group, you take that photo. Or even professionally, you're drawing something on a big board, you can just take the shot without having to move back or take a panorama like we normally do, right? Exactly. So, so the wide angle lens is really good, but that's not all. The manual mode on this camera is really good for those who want to tinker around with those settings. Yeah. So you can adjust ISO, you have a live histogram for photos. Also in the video, you can do a lot of things in the manual mode. Yeah, and as you can see in some of these samples, they're pretty amazing. But I'm the type of guy who just takes out my phone and starts taking photos. And so I couldn't get the same results with auto mode. I agree, Kevin. The auto mode is quite disappointing. I've used the Samsung in the past and oh, yeah. they're really good at auto. Yeah. The LG unfortunately falls a bit short. To give you guys an idea on how good this camera is with this wide angle lens and manual mode, we made an entire video on this. So check that out. And if you've seen that video, it was actually shot in Utrecht, which is here in the Netherlands. Right. And so a big shout out to LG Netherlands for sending out this review device. But this is the EU model, which is one of many variants. Right, Rowan? Right. So you have all kinds of different phones in all different zones. Uh, in Asia, you, it comes standard with a 64 gig yeah. and a dual SIM. In Korea, you get a quad DAC on top of that. That's really good. Uh, in the US, you get wireless charging. And in Europe, you get none of these. We have the poor man's G6. Why, LG, why? But those are the differences. But there are a few things in common. For example, the screen. It's got that 18 by nine aspect ratio, which means it's longer than it is wide, so it's extremely easy to grip. And you get so much more screen and a smaller form factor which is really nice. However, when watching videos, especially YouTube, you're gonna see some letterboxing. It's an LCD screen, not an AMOLED. A lot of people prefer AMOLED over LCD, but it is bright enough, it is vivid enough, it does the job really well. And I really like the always on display, speaking about the display. I like how they've implemented the notifications that pop up. Yeah. And even though it's LCD, it doesn't affect the battery in a big way. And another commonality is that it's IP68 certified which means it's water and dust resistant. Nice to have. Commonality. Oh yeah. All right, it's also rated very highly for drops and it's supposed to be very durable. So that's a good thing. Uh, I haven't tested it personally, but I believe them when they say it, it can take drops. Yeah. And another commonality, Kevin, is that they all have expandable storage. Yeah. So I really like this trend in Android phones these days, only the flagships, not the flagship killers, that you can add an SD card and just bump up that memory. Yeah. Because fruit-based companies that actually charge you more just for a few gigs, memory is cheap, guys, come on. And finally, it comes with USB Type-C. It's a way of quick charging, but there are others. Right. Right. So with the Samsung I was using, there was adaptive fast charging. Yeah. On the OnePlus, there's the dash charge. Both of these forms of charging are faster than the LG G6. The LG G6 is faster than your regular standard charging. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but it's not the fastest one out there. So even though the fast charging ain't the best, you're definitely gonna need it. Because we'd say the battery is one of its weakest points, but the results are inconclusive. Because personally, I got about two and a half hours screen on time on a full charge, and it deplete by the end of the day. So I'd charge it mostly before leaving work or after I got home, just to be sure. Right, and I've used two different units of the LG Z6, the review unit and another new unit, but it depends. Sometimes I get two and a half hours, sometimes I get four hours plus. So it's really extreme. And if you go online and read, I started a couple of Reddit threads on this. There are all kinds of results out there. Yeah. So some people agreeing that it's terrible, some people saying it's great. Your mileage may vary. And the battery you can't swap out like earlier models of LG's flagship phones. Yeah. But one thing you can change is some aspects of LG software skin. Yes, for example, that keyboard. It's terrible, so it didn't take me long just to swap it out with, for example, Gboard. And it didn't have an app drawer with the skin. Oh, 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 just a second. What was that? What happened? What? What is it? What's this? What? They just released an update. Kidding, right? It's up on the screen. It has an app drawer. Yeah. Still, the keyboard's up. Right, but I agree that <laughs> the, the software in general is not pretty, right? The settings thing is weirdly yeah. organized, it's a bit ugly, you get these weird pop-up menus, etc., yeah. etc. But I must say, all that notwithstanding, mm -hmm. the performance is flawless. And when you say that it works just fine, it's not just that. They even have some features which I actually find useful. Mm -hmm. For example, the navigation buttons, mm -hmm. you can customize them to your heart's content. You can also add a notification shade pull down button, which is really handy with a tall, skinny phone. Yep. And that brings us to our new category, first world problems. One, that annoying sound on tap. Two, not having a notification LED. Three, the hardware buttons to launch the camera. And four, who the hell puts a headphone jack on the top? Let's get down to brass tacks to buy or not to buy. You should buy the LG G6 if bang for your buck is important to you. Because the LG G6 is priced incredibly well if you compare it to other flagships in the market right now. Right. It's about 50% the price of a Samsung or iPhone, but with 90% of its features. Right. And even for such a well-priced device, it does not feel cheap at any point. It's all metal yeah. and it's well-built. It has those nice squared sides. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a very delicate edge screen, which means you can put on a screen protector without it looking ugly. Yeah. And it actually comes with one pre-installed. And yeah, it's easy to grip. And that's the reason I didn't go with a case. I could use it, but naked. What? Butt naked. Oh, the phone was butt naked, not... Uh... Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. What oh. else? I have some oh. strong image. And you get more screen and a smaller form factor. What's not to like about that? And this houses that dual lens camera. Right, I think it's one of the most creative implementations of a dual lens I've seen. Yeah. Uh, the wide angle lens is a clear differentiator. You can't get that with any other phone. The manual mode is really effective in photo and video. But hey, those were the reasons to buy the LG G6. There are also some reasons why you would not want to buy the G6. And since we ended with the camera, let's start with the camera. That auto mode. I don't know why LG can't have an auto mode that is at least close to the other auto modes out there. It's really ordinary. And if you're like a point and shoot kind of person, as most people are with their cell phone cameras, you're not going to like this phone. And it's not only the camera software that's the problem, because LG's not really on top of their game with their skins and launchers and keyboards. But that you can swap out. Mm -hmm. What you can't swap out is the battery. Inconclusive. 
So that's all for our review of the LG G6. So you're going to have to decide if you want to buy it. Are you talking to me? Yeah, why not? So I'm going to decide? Yeah, you decide. So, okay, let's see. LCD screen, 18 to 9. Yep. It's got a clean design. Absolutely. And it performs just fine. Oh, yeah. It beats dust and water. Yep. And the price is really getting hotter. Oh, yeah. I don't know about the battery, man, but I love that widescreen cam. Mm. And that is why I went and bought the G6. Korean version, 64 gigs, quad that. <laughs>